Hello, today is Tuesday, May 28th, and we are continuing our journey through this book, Quest 52 by Mark Moore. Today we are in chapter 21, day two, and today's question is, read the story of Ruth. How does she represent redemption and restoration? And of course, the overall question for the chapter is, can Jesus restore my relationships? Which we have found the answer is yes. But let's get into Ruth. So I won't read the whole book aloud to you, but I'll give a summary instead. The book of Ruth starts in the time of the judges, which was a very dark time for Israel. God judged the land as wicked and brought on a famine. We read that in Ruth, there was one family, Elimelech, Naomi, and their sons, who left Bethlehem to live in the country of Moab, where the sons married Moabite women, one of them being Ruth. But those men and their father eventually died before they had any more sons. Naomi and her daughters-in-law went back to Judah, and Naomi released them to return to their previous families because she couldn't offer them any hope to better their lives by her own means um, as shamed and impoverished widows. See, it was a very difficult time in culture for women in a position like this. So one daughter-in-law said a bitterly sad goodbye to Naomi, but chapter 1 verse 14 says Ruth clung to her. Verses 16 and 17 of chapter 1 lay out this beautiful covenant that Ruth makes with Naomi, which includes what is also effectively a covenant to the God of Israel. And this kind of devotion and humility is what seems to set up the rest of the story that eventually leads to blessings and restoration for both Naomi and Ruth. See, they had lost their husbands and they didn't know what was next for them or how to hold on to hope, but they had each other and they were returning home to the land of the true God who was able to redeem the situation by his divine provision. To try to keep the summary brief, brief, Ruth ends up meeting a kind man named Boaz, who was in the clan of Naomi's late husband, which customarily put him in the position of being what they called a redeemer or guardian redeemer. This is actually a legal term in Hebrew uh, from Leviticus 25 for someone with the ability or really an obligation to redeem a relative in serious difficulty, restoring their honor and acting as their provider by joining them to his family. So eventually, Boaz buys Naomi out of debt, marries Ruth, and gives the family sons, and that allows the women to have a proper inheritance of the land belonging to the Elimelech clan. Not only that, but Ruth, through her descendants, becomes great-grandmother to King David, which of course connects her to the genealogy of Jesus himself, our great redeemer. Parts of this book may seem a little bit odd to us in the modern day culture, but I hope you can still see how Ruth's story with Boaz is an earthly image of God's redemptive work for all his people. See, with Ruth and Naomi, they had lost nearly everything, including family and any hope for an, an inheritance but God provided a redeemer. And when Ruth made a covenant in which she humbly devoted herself to Naomi's God, he provided a redeemer who not only paid their debt and restored their livelihood by making them part of his household, but he made Ruth his bride and the, God, the kingdom of God, the work for the kingdom of God progressed by millions of miles. Um, after the descendants led to Jesus, the Redeemer of all the creation. See, friends, when we devote ourselves to our God, we are invited to share the victory of Jesus, who paid our spiritual debt, gives us new life, and calls us, as his church, his bride. And he loves us more than anyone could ever imagine, and we can spend eternity in his security and re restored blessedness it's just it's such an amazing thing so if you have not decided to follow jesus yet we really want to help you come to know what that means so if you have any questions please reach out to us we would be happy to help you find your next steps and 
we would love to hear from you about what parts of the story of Ruth stood out to you and how you think it connects to this theme of restoration and redemption. But for now, I'm going to pray for you. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for sending your son to be the one true redeemer of all who would come to believe. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit as well so that we weren't left to learn and understand the significance of Jesus' work without help. I ask that you would reveal more of yourself to those who keep a blind eye, blind eye to you and remind us that so long as you are in the picture, hope is alive. And we love you, Lord. It is in your holy name I pray. Amen. Until next time, friends, you are sent 